everybody. Welcome to another episode and edition of the Fight Factory podcast right here on Premier Wrestling, the app, and of course, Premier Wrestling's YouTube channel powered by Absolute Eyewear getting involved each and every week. Go over there. Say Chop Sports. Say uh, Fight Factory. Say all bunch of shit. Say Jimmy Palumbo. I don't give a shit. They'll give you $100 off uh, frames and lenses. And of course, this majestic beard is being brought to you by MadCatBeardCare.com. You'll see a commercial of theirs in the middle of this show because this is a breakup show. Yes, we're breaking up. I'm done with you, Payne. Now, uh, listen, there's a uh, schedule conflict. What, what did I do? I'll change. Schedule conflicts. <laughs> schedule conflicts. Uh, so I'm going to have Payne in the, in the front half of the show, and then we're going to close it with Tommy. Uh, so that's why we have the two man set. We have a nice little set here today. At the Richard Lucas Chevrolet uh, and Subaru Studio, we have the Mike Flag. It's condensed. The fight, yeah, condensed version. Condensed. My, uh, the Fight Factory Mike Flag. We have an Earl Hebner, or is that Dave Hebner? It's Earl. Yeah, but could be Dave. Which one was the thief? There, there's a thief of the two. Oh, one of them got fired because he was stealing gear out of bags in the locker room at WWF. What a smart individual. Son anyway, of a bitch. Uh, and then you have you Macho Man, who I met over the weekend, by the way. Hey, that was oh, awesome. Yeah. And uh, and we have the poster, show posters right here. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, how do you call that? Um, Photoshop. Yeah. So the poster of the Where war. The fuck did it- <laughs> war on the shore is uh, Are also you fucking with me, kid. Picking up steam, <laughs> Dave Sturgio. Chris Payne coming off a very successful WrestleMania weekend. We'll get into WrestleMania in a little bit, but obviously it started with WrestleCon. And it's so funny, dude, because I remember when we started having these ideas of who we wanted to book for the show, blah, blah, blah. You came out of left field with this text saying, how about we get Mike Kyoto to ref? And I'm like, the guy, he's not going to ref. He's not going to do it. First, <laughs> first guy, fucking guy we first see guy we run Mike into, Kyoto. Mike Kyoto. He's a little brother. And he, and he couldn't have been a nicer man. It is probably the nicest dude that I've met uh, in a long time. And he's like, I'll tell you, I'll come down. I'll, we'll drink, and then we'll set up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get hammered first. Then we set up the ring. It'll be cock no. no, in his defense, he said, he goes, I don't drink on the job. Yeah, no, he is a pro's pro. He's offered a lot of help with production and stuff like that. In addition to, he'll be... Uh, uh, refereeing the main event between Casey Navarro and his opponent. And, of course, um, you know, I, I'm, we might involve him in the women's match with Lady Frost. Uh, I'm not sure yet because we obviously are still TBA. finalizing. Yeah, finalizing the card. But that's or to, uh, TBD. There you go. To be determined. Um, Two but, big dicks. Yeah. All right. Wow. Uh, <laughs> rated R now, folks. Um, listen, awesome weekend. We really got a chance to, to uh, network our asses off down there. Um, Premier Wrestling had a two tables. Um, and of course, Fight Factory was able to put their poster there. And from everything you got, Payne, it seems like everybody's really, really like pumped about the show. Yeah, people stopped. They saw the flyers, saw the uh, saw us. I had the Fight Factory shirt on, mm-hmm. uh, so it was nice to be represented down there. Yes, uh, um, but also like you know, people just like they looked at the car and like they like it's your first time. Yeah, first time. I think my favorite interaction was with Anthony Bowens. Um, I asked him, and I, and I and I slipped him the 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 thing. He was. He was over there with Caster, and he came by the table. He was talking to Casey Navarro, who was at our table for a little while. And he, uh, he's, he, I slip him the card, like the postcard thing, and I'm like, hey, uh, you too expensive for this show, right? Like He's like, oh, you know, I don't really do many indies anymore outside of WrestlePro. And Pro. put it in his pocket. And not, only that, <laughs> not only that, but he was like, you know, blah, blah, blah. But like, lo and behold, he didn't even know that it was our promotion at first. Once he found that out, well, he was I like. I fired a zinger at him. He was like. And I'm like, that's because you don't follow me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I got unfollowed too at one point. I don't know why, um, but uh, maybe I do know why. But anyway, I uh, he, right away he saw that he's like, "Oh, there's a food, oh, there's a food table." Oh, you know, like, <laughs> we're here. We'll here. yeah, we'll see uh, about Anthony Bones maybe down the line. But um, yeah, like I said, positive responses. We got more announcements to come tonight. I don't want to really say any on the show, dude. I'm pumped. Like the card is is <laughs> in the last couple of days. Really starting to shape up fucking nicely. Yeah, and, and I think it's a great mix between like the blend is the so future great. of the of pro wrestling plus some of the legends plus some of the current big names. Obviously, we started this off with a home run with Matt Cardona, and then you add a legend like Danny Moff on the independent scene, and then you get the one of the the hottest independent women wrestlers slash now newly signed AEW wrestler, yep. Lady Frost. She's on the board, um, and then look, gymnastics. Joey Janela is is new. You can't. Talk about New Jersey wrestling without thinking about Joey Janela. So we have all these guys. You knew this already, but the people that we've interacted with over the last couple of days, and and landing some of the bigger names that we didn't even expect to do. Shout out to Tommy over at Big Event. Yep. Uh, we'll announce that tonight on social media. If you're watching this There's right a couple now, from Tommy, yeah. If you're watching this right now, it's probably around six seven o'clock anyway. 
So do you, do you think we could just say it? I mean, we're probably going to release it around the same time. Uh, yeah, I don't care. All I'm right. So Tommy uh, is, is first of all, shout out to the big event because the big event is just that. It's huge. Every time that dude puts on a show, <laughs> it is just. I think it's hilarious. We're both from New York and we had to go to Philly to have a business meeting. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And I, we did talk to Tommy for a little while. I know you were more in tune with him. In fact. I've known him for when you came back Years. to the table, sometimes I was just like, you know, I'm working a table with Premiere. We're trying to launch the app, which, by the way, again, if you download the Premiere Wrestling app, go check out my fandom. Every picture you took from the weekend, tag the event, put it out on the app. It's awesome. It's, it's really a cool way to kind of curate your own wrestling uh, history as a fan. But pain sporadically would just disappear. And I'm like, all right, well, he's he's probably out there networking. So he gets, <laughs> which, <laughs> after the hot dog I was. <laughs> yeah, so after we ate a little bit... Um, he came back and he was like, "Yeah, we got this one." And I was like, "What? What do you mean? What do you mean we got? <laughs> like, how much is that going to run?" It? And like, Tommy is a really good dude. Not this Tommy, Tommy D. We're talking about a yeah, good that guy's Tommy. a piece of shit. Yeah, a good Tommy. <laughs> um, I thought talking to him six months ago. He's hooking us up <laughs> with you know. Look, you think Beach? You think Jersey Shore? You think she's from Jersey? Let's get some beautiful women out there and uh, talk about one of the top beautiful women out there. Mandy Sachs is is going to be involved. With, Hands down, top three most beautiful woman in wrestling ever. I, I it's it's crazy, and, and what she's what she what she's going to bring to the Jersey Shore to the war on the shore is just top notch. Can't wait. And then of course it doesn't stop there. Uh, under Tommy, he said, "You know what? Hey, listen, we got Dana Brooke too. You know, like bring her on." It's like, wait, what? You know, so. We're finally starting to add some women to the show, mostly for appearances. Uh, Lady Frost, D Dana, Dana, and Mandy will be doing appearances. But yeah, the other the other females that we've already announced are are going to be working. So. Lady Frost is the only girl that we announced so far. So right, we, right, right. we are going to announce the next one after her flight's booked. Pain. Um, we'll get that done over the course of the next week. Hi, welcome to United. Yeah, but uh, yeah, <laughs> everybody flies to United. Um, Bro, I got the mile. Yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, it's just been a really really cool week for us. Uh, as, a, as a brand, as a company, people are starting to get excited about the event. I know we're excited about the event. Me and Payne are going to sip on some margaritas on Monday. We're going to visit with them again, give them a couple posters. And um, something that's going to be awesome. Something I'm excited about is um, so you get, the, you get your ev everyday indie wrestler. Hey, I'm available. I'd love to be a part of your show. Right. Granted, I did the same shit when I worked. Of course. Uh, it's very exciting. When you have the top talents on the independent scene that have been to the show, that have come back to try and do their own creatively, are hitting us up. Yes. Like, when they're hitting us up, that's when you know you've got something that could be, if it's done correctly, which I think we're doing, uh, that's exciting to see that they want to work with us. And I think... I, as I opposed think, to the other way around, where we got to, like, reach out and beg and hope they, they answer. And I truly think that having other people in our corner... Meaning, like, we booked Lady Frost once upon a time. She was in, her, you know, a, a match to never be seen. But, like, she's she was in our first female showcase match. But now that she's down Goddamn at AEW. Goddamn computer glitches. So I'm sorry? Goddamn computer glitches. Yeah, well, listen, hard drives crash. What do you want me to do? Um, but what, what I will say is this. Sometimes Lady Frost sick. has also kind of networked for us. You know, like, anybody with any questions are going to Frost and say, all right, these guys legit. Because if they are, like, we're going to hit them up. So that's why we're, we're getting some messages Via either Lady Frost or people down at AEW, um, so that's that's yeah, it's definitely one of those cool things and feelings that we're on to something. Yep. Um, you know, crunching the numbers, like how many more guys or girls can we add? You know, we're we're, we're trying to. I'm not Rockefeller. Pop, <laughs> I'm trying to pump the brakes a little bit, but at the same time, you know, some of the people that were also now scheduled to appear and wrestle, T.J. Crawford, you know, Chris Steeler, guys like that, like these guys, Casey Navarro's in the main event. We're we're trying to mix. Uh, give a good mix uh, of of independent wrestling slash notoriety. So it's all coming together good. Keep your eyes peeled at Fight Factory Wrestling on Instagram. Follow the Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter. And, um, yeah, that'll be that. So WrestleMania. Well, real quick, I want to go. We, we touched this real quick at sure. WrestleCon because I'm more of – I like the convention stuff. So It was fun. Uh, I'm going to give a little a few shout-outs to you. Uh, I don't remember the company, but they were super cool. Um, I have that business card at home. Did you I'll buy them? them. Wait. Right, so I bought Macho Man. I bought the purple fanny pack of the uh, it is Winged dope. Eagle. You went and, out. You went out and and almost got killed for that. So, well, I had to fight <laughs> off six bums and one was shitting. Um, Philadelphia, am I right? <laughs> that was at a pop up shop at uh, Blind Barber in Philly, downtown Philly. Uh, Stash Pages. 
Okay. Who was also there with Extra Cooler. Those are the guys. Oh, that, I know those guys. Yep. Okay. Uh, Nick, great guy. Finally got to meet him for the first time in, since, bro, 12 years maybe? 10 mm-hmm. years? Whatever it was. Extra been a long cooler, time. Bro, finally got to meet back. the guy. So I got him. And then Josh at Zombie Sailors. Yeah. Uh, Earl Hebner. How could you not get Earl for your Hasbro code? And you had a promo code for Mike Kyoto. And I'm getting a Mike Kyoto. Yeah. So, so that's Mike Kyoto is dropping soon. I think June he's going to be released, but I got to order that one. So that's going to be pretty sick. That's pretty cool. So when, when they do these things, I'm they just, signed them. They signed guys to contracts. Is that what it is? Yeah. Like Aaron Depends. So this this series looks like it has Cardona, Myers, Dino Bravo, Sabu, and Earl Hebner. I don't think I'm mistaken when I say this. The guy that is designing these figures is the same guy that designed the Hasbro figures back in the nineties. Yeah, uh, really? 90s. Yep. So that's that's awesome. Zombie's doing great stuff. Great and, dude. He's from Staten Island originally. Yeah, and Zombie a, Sailor, like he, um, even the the, he's got the back graphic, the back like the it's not an actual picture of him, which I think yeah fights off the legal stuff. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? So you don't have to worry about that so much. But uh, uh, he, um, cool. he's got Cardona, Myers. Yeah. Um. So I believe I believe he was at one of their live shows or yeah, something yeah, like that. Was. So yeah, yeah. they have a good connection over there. Yeah. And of course, good dude in the toy business. I, I still can't believe I I can believe it because I know the work ethic of a Matt Cardona and Brian Myers and the guys like that. But like I can't believe how much that shit has taken off as far as like good major them, bendies and this that and the third. Yeah. It's like. I remember having these toys, and I'm like, all right, these are cool. And then, they like, I'll have never have them again. They have their own toy line. They literally have got their own somebody toy making toys. Like, and there's exclusive, and chases, and this, yeah. and that. And there's, like, alternatives. Like, oh, get the Cardona with the, the blood release. all over them yeah. or whatever. You know, so Zombie like, did that one. Zombie's got that. Uh, he has a Nick, Ca- uh, Nick Gage. Which, right? by the Nick way, Cage. I finally saw Nick Gage for the first time in my life um, walking up the e- or going up the escalator. I was like, oh, that's, that's him. So they have him, and then they have <laughs> a variant of the blood. And then they have uh, Cardona. From that match, mm-hmm. with the white shirt and the white the white gear, and I believe uh, Josh Chernoff still has blood on that tie from that interview. So, uh, congratulations <laughs> to that. Kudos. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> look, it, it was an awesome it was a fun, convention, fun, fun time. Nobody really like you know. Uh, I want to say you know I, I got to see Chris Van Vliet again. Say hello to him. And I um, missed out on Saturday and Sunday because I had uh, parental duties. No, but, but it's all good. But, but even Friday, Friday, Friday was, good. was good. Friday was great. Friday was loaded. Caught man. up with a bunch of people. It was nice to nice to get welcome back. Yeah. After being gone for so long, and the people still. Uh, I don't know. I'm weird when it comes to, to being around people. I was older when I got in the business the second time or the fifth time around, whatever the fuck it was. But um, so I didn't really like do the clicky thing. I didn't hang out. I didn't go out all the time. I thought you were a dear good friend. Wasn't stuff. that a clicker? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it was nice to see them and them actually calling me out and saying, yo, where you been? <laughs> Wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Life gets in the way. So um, it was nice to, to catch up with a lot of the guys that I, that I hadn't seen that I didn't know if we're going to be standoffish or not because they are a little bit of, we uh, got some, we got some drinks on Thursday night. Some, well, you, you know, if it, here's a little, like, a little, a really little, little fun. advice going forward for anybody that holds a uh, WrestleCon. Maybe not have the two oldest bartenders <laughs> on the planet serving the whole hotel that, that has been packed out and sold out for at least. Actually, three hold on, I'm prior. just getting word. Uh, my drink is ready right now. As a matter of fact, so it's going to be door dashed. <laughs> it's going to be a like two hundred thirty six dollars. Yeah, and it's plus rough tip. because you know you got the wrestling, you got the fans, you got like wrestlers involved, yeah. and like. You know, even the legends there who can still slug them back. Guys Dude, like was, Honky Tonk Man. What are we just sitting around there drinking with legends and current current top guys? Yeah, I think it was, was Cardona, Myers, uh, Ziggler was there. Yeah, Cage, uh, Warlow. Um, Warlow was Gibson chilling. And, um, Big Bobby Gibson. And, um, um, yeah, dude. I fucking it, always remember the other, forget the other guy's name. Bobby Gibson. Morton. And, yeah, Ricky Morton. Ricky Morton was um, there. With he, his son. He fucking ribbed me. With his son. <laughs> yeah, he did. Um but yeah, it was awesome. Sonny Ono wouldn't leave anybody alone. He was there the entire weekend. Uh, he's awesome. So yeah, it was like the who's who. I'm not. We're not trying to name drop, but it's just cool to have everybody all in one. Hey, remember place. that time? Remember that time I wrestled uh, Yoko, uh, Ultimo Dragon, and then he, he tried to charge me for an autograph. <laughs> that, was, that was of you in it, of me in the match. <laughs> So that was that was that was awesome. That was probably was. My, my low. Yeah, that was uh, that was the, a funny uh, moment. We also met uh, a, a couple of fans that were going to be in attendance. One of them had a husband that was, I don't know, 100, 102. Oh, she was around sakes. 30. Missing four fingers. <laughs> and, uh, I don't mean to put anybody on blast. It's not like they're going to nah, see it. Fuck I can't wait till they send a DM like, I saw your show, you dick. You know, you told us about it, so we watched. Yeah, you, so you we, we decided to us. tune in. Ah, um, whatever. 
A lot of fun, though. A lot of fun. Met a lot of cool people. Yeah, it was definitely and, uh, fun. Met fun Tony time. Schiavone for about a half a minute. Um, you know, it's just everything. The whole, the whole back wall uh, was ECW. All the uh, OG ECW guys were there. <laughs> Sandman, Sabu. I love them all, but it looked like death row. It re- yeah, I mean, they're, they're listen, they put their bodies through so much. Um, well, I meant inmate-wise, too, but also that. <laughs> 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 Speaking of death row, OJ Simpson died today. Um, so, you know, God rest his soul. And Fucking Janela put out a tweet that says uh, reunited. reunited. I saw that. I saw that. And, and Janela's, he don't miss sometimes. I'm just like, dude, that's, that and he was put, good. And he put halos on I know. <laughs> My only question was, um, I, I put it out there. I was like, I wonder, you know, if God's going to see OJ like, hey, God, what's up? Like, With arms wide open. Uh, <laughs> You know, I don't really agree with that, Jerry. <laughs> hey, so, listen, uh, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Why don't you turn around and head on down to the away locker room? <laughs> right. um, so your entrance is down over yeah. there. Pictures <laughs> over level. there. Basement. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so, right, yeah. Let's get into WrestleMania. Great weekend, but yes, it all capped off WrestleMania. Me and Josh. Well, we did SmackDown. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, we went to SmackDown after we did WrestleCon, uh, SmackDown and the Hall of Fame, which, by the way, if I'm making any suggestions whatsoever... Make the Hall of Fame either its own night or start it a little earlier. Uh, I just feel like the the energy was out of the room after Heyman. Well, obviously, there was, I, there was I know why they did that because it was already running long. They knew Heyman was going to talk forever. You you couldn't have the other ones talk and then put Heyman on because then you're sitting there until one a.m. Yeah. So Heyman's speech. By the way, if you weren't there. You don't get the uncensored version ever. That will never be seen the light of day. I mean, to see Paul Heyman tell somebody to suck his dick. Bro, we've never popped so hard. I was like, what? Like, we're, Did he just say that? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what What did I just listen to? Um, That was, whew, damn. I mean, he really didn't give a shit. Uh, you know, can't the whole cancel thing, like, go ahead, cancel me. I'll come back stronger. Yeah, cancel me again. Cancel me again. Cancel me again. Heyman just gives no fucks. No. And uh, if you're in this business as a promoter, manager, whatever he was, you know, f- lying about being a photographer just to get backstage. Like, that's the story you want to see. I don't remember. 17? He was in high school. He yeah. left high school just to do it. Yeah. But Heyman's speech was unbelievable. It was good to see Stephanie McMahon back there yeah. uh, with I'll, Triple H. I'll say this. I'm going to crap on a, a handful of the fans. Um, oh, the what chance? Dude. Like, are you out of you your mind? You have minds? people that are getting honored for what they put their life into and com- committed to. And at the time, you were a fan, so you were cheering at the time. Obviously, Dun- Thunderbolt was way before our time, but mm. in the same token, it's like they're giving their their speeches, they're talking about or being talked about, and you have people chanting "What?" and it's like have some have some class. You may not like what who's talking or care about what they're saying, but have some yeah, class. Like I, that's their lifelong achievement, getting into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you it's just what? like you don't you don't have to be screaming a complete shit. Douche. Like, and it was like so obvious too. Like everyone's listening, keen in on on what's going on, and you just guys what, and then saying stupid shit, and it's just like. If I was closer, I might have been arrested because I would have punched somebody. Yeah, just I, out of respect. It's a shitty. It's a shitty thing. Like you don't have to necessarily do the, do the what chant. Yeah, Philly. Listen, just based off of where I went around Philly, I just fucking I, dumpster fire. I, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big Bro, fan. I'm from I'm New York. It's a shithole. I, I, listen, that I'm is a, a shit. I'm a New Jersey hole. guy. I know New York is a shithole too. Uh, I'm going to that shithole in Philly. Half an hour. Philly is just another beast. But um. Yeah, so the Hall of Fame was incredible. SmackDown was good. Felt like a little bit of a coast show, meaning like a lot of promo heavy. You very, know. very weird. Yeah, well, you just didn't want to risk anything. You nah, know? Like, but he, like they spoke for forty nine minutes in the opening se- opening hour. Forty nine minutes. That was raw. What? That was raw, dude. You got your oh. events <laughs> events mixed up. SmackDown but, uh, was great. SmackDown was great. <laughs> like I said, they were in cruise control. Everybody needed to get to Mania safely, and they did. WrestleMania SmackDown night, was good. Raw was like WrestleMania night one was fucking freezing. First of all, me and Josh were correspondents in the uh, in the uppers, right? And I was Which like, "Which was awesome, by the way." Oh, we I'm listen, not just popping you because you're my buddy, but like it's just no. Like, see, see, it was, it was a cool like that's delivery. Like you were in amongst the people. I, I know, but some people don't think that. Um, some people think we we're just you know marks that are just at the top of the stadium doing our thing yeah they're also the same people that sit at home and do reaction videos and pretend to be shocked when they see something yes those people too um but i i guess my only gripe about the first night of wrestlemania was um weather the weather (laughs) yeah it was it was just freezing and uh but uh, other than that, I thought it was great. The energy was delivered. I know I, I watched a couple of the matches back on on Peacock, but like I didn't, I didn't get what other people were saying. People were like, "Oh, they're dead out there." Like I heard people, it was loud. Like we had a good. 
I, I, I didn't realize until I watched night two that, oh. that it was less of a... Oh, but night, again, dude, weather is going to play into that. Night so. two was leaps and bounds better. Everybody knows that. I'm not sure if that was the intent, but that's what it was. Um, I mean, listen, the biggest story of all this is that Cody Rhodes won, right? Yep. And he finishes the story. The match itself, dude, Bro. I, I think... And I and I compared it to Bro, it could be a fucking Academy Award. Do you remember when Triple H went against Sting? Uh-huh. NWO. Yeah. DX, right? All this like And it was just like it was fucking the timing was fucking epic. It was. And now this was delivered. And I, I, I gotta get your reaction because obviously the, the rumors were swirling on who was gonna be there. And we were talking to Lloyd the day before, and he was like, Oh, maybe I'll be there too. Um, but like overall, the first person to come out. We know it's going to be Jay, then Jimmy to the rescue, right? Um, vice versa, sorry. Right. Um, but Jimmy, you know, Jay, Solo. Jimmy, Jay, and then Solo. Cena. Cena, right? Rock, the Cena taker. Bro, so there was rumors that it was going to be Austin, right? And I guess nothing got worked out, whatever. But when that gong hit, bro, the fucking place went bonkers. I'm I, like... And I didn't know what kind of taker we were going to get because there was pictures and videos circling that he was in a press box just watching it, mm-hmm. and he showed up in the ring in the same gear, like Scully, yeah. hoodie, you know. Hocus. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I just didn't think – I think it would have took way too long for the whole dramatic entrance of The Undertaker. The fact that he just appeared in the ring, gave The Rock the choke slam, and then disappeared, flawless. Flawless execution. Dude, I mean, it was unbelievable. Uh, if there was a gripe out of anything, because I like to fucking make sure I critique everything, that's my flaw mm. in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Rock sandbagged him. I felt like he could have jumped higher, um, but I also think he lost his grip on his belt. He lost his grip, so that's what happened. I, I, I watched it over and over. It looks like he lost his grip on the belt. Rock is only going to jump so high. Taker's got to give him something. But bro, how about the fucking like being specific with Jay and Jimmy Spear? Oh, like dude. Right through the table, foot to off the right, the state. foot to the left. It was it was brutal, and the whole Cena spot. Remember, man, Perfect. Cena's coming in there doing his thing with Solo, gives the attitude adjustment to Roman, yeah. and then tries to fuck with the final boss. Final boss, boop, put him right on his ass. The long term storytelling that they did with Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, dude, was unbelievably done. He, so he wore the same outfit. He took the same type of like cringe hit. And then the cell on the bottom rope, like Roman took, mm-hmm. was like. And not only that, he gets so he gets. Uh, first of all, I don't know why my head went to when the Shield music hits. My head did go to Moxley. I was like, is there any way, shape, or form that something happened where they got Moxley back? I don't know why. We're talking about Dean Ambrose for anybody who doesn't know who John Moxley is, but like, I honestly, I was like, it can't be Seth doing this. He just lost to to you know McIntyre, and he's probably off into the sunset. He but comes he also in a cut a promo talking about being a Shield. He did. So he, it, that kind of makes sense. He did. It and he looked the part. He looked great. Um, um, the that, whole thing was fucking. Uh, it was, it was, it was so cool. It was so cool. Just the, the, the delivery. I didn't think Cody was going to win. At the very last second, I was like, somehow, some way, Roman's still walking out of here, champion. I really felt that way. And the fact that they delivered it to Cody, the reaction was great. Promo was short and sweet. Got Triple H, got Bruce Pritchard out there, got the whole cr- cast and crew, everybody putting him up on his shoulders and shit. So the moment was awesome. What was your biggest surprise of both nights? The mm. biggest surprise to me Mine is that. Mine was Priest. Well, I called that. I, I know you did, but I but in my head, like, after the. And by the way, you talk about a choke slam that looked <sighs> fucking amazing. Mint. Mint. Damian Priest cash and I called on the oh, on the he, wrestling hour he, the, like when he literally hit that, hours before it. When he hit that, I'm like, this guy's a star too. Dude, and we've been saying that about Damian Priest on this show specifically. And yeah. I think that um McIntyre, you know, his big thing, another long term uh, long term storytelling, his big thing to Seth was you're too focused on the bloodline. You're too focused on the bloodline. McIntyre was too focused on, on CM, CM Punk. Punk. And that's what cost him overall. Yeah. Um, did you see the tweet he put out during the match? <laughs> yeah. Like bored at work, lol. Yep, and yep. his response was fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. That is mint storytelling at it its was best. Awesome. And then on uh, you know, the fast forward a little bit to Raw, and I'm sure we'll cover a lot of this with Tommy too, but like on Raw, you know, I fully expected him to win the number one contendership. I fully expected that. No, I fully um, expected McIntyre. Oh, really? I thought for sure he was gonna win that thing, and I was like, all right, and then and, and to give it to Jay and kind of swerve us all. Well, we've been that- talking about Jay making his waves as they broke up with the bloodline too. Like they're making a star while telling a story for somebody else. Also over the weekend, 
Jacob Fatu. There was rumors that yep. Feifel put out there that he What's was that signed. Other? What's the girl's name from Stardom that got signed? Julia? <laughs> She's on the rundown, I think. Uh, Gulia? Julia? Julia? Yeah, Julia Gulia. She's yeah, she was there for NXT girl. Stand and Deliver. Yep. Uh, but yeah, night one real quick to go over it. The my, my, low, my low match would be, uh, I hate to say it, was Jimmy and Jay. Yeah, you know, they didn't, uh, I, I, the story, first of all, the promo package prior to that, I was like, Phew, in the heart, in the strings, and all that shit. Uh, but yeah, the ma the match itself, while good, it didn't live up to everything else on the card. Um, Rhea and Becky, uh, Becky set the tone on night one. They really did great. Motionless. Bro. Motionless and White doing a, a live performance of her song. And it was a good performance, too. It, was it wasn't like one of these weird ones where they're like talking to the crowd and like no, sounding was, like shit. It was awesome. They sounded amazing. Uh, she, You could tell she was all jazzed up for that. It was fucking mint. Hell yeah. So um, I, I would put, um, if I had to, set, set Centrist was cool, but I would put Rhea at number two. Only because I'm a big fan of like fucking hero music. Like I love Star Wars because of their music, and mm -hmm. like it, that helps tell the story. Cody's package before they played Kingdom, I like that. Was I like sick. The I, mask was sick. I just wish they'd stop fucking doing these angles from up from the below. Like he's got the mask. Let him see the eyes. Let the see the eyes. Like it took forever to get to I'm the. Surprised eyes. he took it off so quick. Same thing with the Rock. Like all I saw was fucking flames. I didn't even know he was standing there for ten minutes. Yeah, he looked like he was coming out with the brood. <laughs> but right, I, I, I loved it. Gangrel's behind him. Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> but um, I would have to. I would have to go. Uh, Cody one, Rhea two, and then Roman three. Romans was Romans was pretty sick. With unbelievable. The, with the, live, the uh, band and the everything. Yeah. Austin Theory. So they split up the uh, the tag titles, which is exactly which is what so we wanted. Dude, fucking truth. Truth is the man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never changed truth. And I'll tell you right now, I was talking to Mark Henry, not the name drop again. Mark Henry was sitting next to us on day two of the, uh, the WrestleCon. And he said, you know, it takes a lot for him to, like, well up and cry. Mm -hmm. He's like, seeing our truth get his. Yeah. Got Ad him mania. in the feels, bro. Like, And, and I'm Ad telling mania. you, for everybody out there. Who just thinks like, oh, our truth is just the, the the funny gimmick, blah blah blah. Like he got his, and it was great to see. So they split up the titles. Our truth and Miz get the Raw ones, and of course Austin Three and Gra Grayson gets DIY. <laughs> they came paid out him, the DX. Paid him watch the DX. Dude, came out to the entire like almost like the Tron mm -hmm. video was DS esque. Um, that I was awesome. It would the only reason why I knew they weren't going to get the SmackDown or the Raw titles at the time, and they weren't taking SmackDown was because they took a long time to. It felt like it took a long time for them to set up the whole like mm. you take the titles and we'll take this title. Yeah, yeah. So, but that would have been that would have been a cool visual if they both got the titles. Hundred, yeah. You know it would have been like, one of those four man. Uh, <laughs> Andrade and Ray defeats Dom Dom and Santos thanks to the help of Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson, two Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, but no, great spot for them. Suck. Uh, Jay obviously defeats Jimmy. We said about that, guys. Can we talk about this for a second? There is an absolute star in the making named Jade Cargill. <laughs> she, everything she does, every uh, movement she makes. And I think I, I forget who I was talking to, but if you're in the, if you're in pro wrestling, you know what a hot tag is. Obviously when you get that hot tag nine times out of 10, those people come in like a freight train. They're coming in. Bang, bang, bang. We're bumping the feet and bumping the feet. Right. When Jade got that, she just slowly got into the ring and the fear entered. and said, come on. Yeah, you know, and, and I was like, "Damn!" I was I was captivated the entire time. Uh, so she gets the job done with Naomi and Bianca. So look, I know we gave him a lot of shit throughout the course of the build, but how great was Sami Zayn beating Gunther? That last sequence was incredible. That let dude, did you see the vertical? And he drops him on his head yep. on the and then the, the Holuva kick, boom, game over. And I just felt like that was a story. That we, I didn't expect to, I, I didn't care who he was getting rooted for in the back. He saw Gable. That he was, saw that KO. That was awesome when he went out and he gave him the fucking smack. And now he's like, your turn. Yeah. He yelled me that too. But I'm saying like, he saw all these people, saw his wife in the crowd. I was like, it doesn't matter. He's still going to lose. <laughs> right? He's still going to lose to Gunther. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, he's the guy now. So it's. Hopefully he can stop crying. Yeah. I mean, you would I, think. I absolutely hated the promos would, yeah. of him like always feeling like. You would the think whiner. You don't get to just come in whenever you feel like it, sir. So you're gonna have to wait your turn. Thanks. Get out, um, douche. Anyway, that's Tommy D. He'll be joining us for the second half of our show. Um, <laughs> As he just stands there like a schmuck. I mean, close the door. close the damn close door. The door. We're door. On the area, piece of <laughs> shit. <Shuttles>. Uh, yeah. <laughs> got anything to eat in this shit hole? Um, no, he's got paper. He's got red solo cups. Eat that. Yeah, eat your solo cups. So Sammy's the guy. The Rock and Roman. Now that's another thing. No outside interference. 
They took the fight everywhere, right? They took the fight everywhere. Rock looked great. Look, Roman looked unbelievable. Yeah. Like I that's the thing about Roman Reigns. Pack. About Roman Reigns. Here's the thing about Roman. Every time he comes out, he's got a hoodie, t-shirt. Like mm -hmm. you don't see him unless he's match ready to go. Yeah. My man looked just as good as the Rock. Like they looked fucking fantastic. Great end to that one. Did the you know the whole like you know slit throat fucking elbow drop one two Mama three. Yeah, and I, I listen. Bro, I'm I'm I hate cursing in wrestling. I've talked about it. NXT. Oh, but he's bringing it. The way The Rock delivers it, it's more of a purpose why he with why he right. curses. 100%. When you watch it on NXT and they're blurring it out, bleeping it out or whatever, which I can't get. I it's I, just for, it's so forced. I can't stand the like USA Network. Get over yourselves. They're saying shit. It's okay. It's like you're watching Raw and it's like holy, holy. Oh, and they're also cutting off the commentary. Well, what about, so I'm going to give Michael Cole his props because that was by far and away the best thing he's ever called in his life. Um, you know, he, he's like, God damn, I love pro wrestling. Holy Christ. Yeah, when he said Christ, <laughs> he was going to the school of Dave Knox. Because <laughs> I said that a yeah, lot. I yeah. said Christ a lot in my commentary. And McAfee's giving off heel vibes. He is. He was, uh, Cole, Cole, Cole. Like, tell him, <laughs> to, tell him to acknowledge the child yeah. Cole. Like now, Cole, you know, yeah. like, he is. He's given the heel vibe. You needed that balance because Corey Graves is a face. Michael Cole is a face. So you needed somebody in yeah. there to kind of give the heel vibes. And then, like, <laughs> like when Jay Uso comes out, he was about to, he was on Raw. He was about to do it again, the whole thing. Yeah. And, and Cole was like, uh, Pat, listen, Gunther's looking right at you, man. <laughs> like, just, just don't do it, man. Just, just don't risk your life. Yeah. Um, but anyway, worst part of the night, without a doubt, in my mind, and I feel I tell I tell them this every single time we talk. What? Uh, Samantha Irvin has got to go. <sighs> you know, she, I feel like they put is... the videos out on Instagram from WWE because they're trolling the fans. Because a lot more fans, if you watch the tro the fans comment before they take the comments out. Because it's always positive, 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 and you get like that one sliver of love. She's no, she's no Oakland, um, no Fink, but like, th she's she's not well perceived by the fans. They fix the fucking Instagram so you can't see those comments. Really? Yeah, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. I check it out all the time. She, I, <laughs> my comments never there. I am sorry <laughs> to be that overly emotional where you can't perform your job. I don't give a fuck if I Michael get, Buffer listen, gave it to that, her, gave her props or whatever. Yeah, I saw that too. Which I don't care about that. Bro, that old I Buffer don't, family could suck it. If you want somebody to have a deep, scraggly voice, no knock on women at all. If you want a woman, I love William Garcia. Hell yeah. If you want a deep, scraggly voice, get a dude. She's way too into it. And uh, now the new production have the camera right, right up her nostril. Right up her ass. Like, dude. I, I was like. I don't care about her. I, the fact that there is a, I don't know what page it is. Sometimes these pages get like suggested to me to follow and I just don't. Because then I like leave a comment like, you have to join the page. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all set. Um, but uh, no, like some people are like, you know, the WWE has been searching for the goat voice since oh, Justin yeah. Roberts and they found her. I was like, what am I missing here? Like, Again, the dramatic, like, the following contest is scheduled. And I'm just like, oh, all right, I get it, but the drama. Way she, she, changes her vo she changes her voice. And now the Elimination Chamber. And that, and then uh, Chelsea the Green. I was like, oh, my God. And I get it. Maybe Chelsea's like, I would love for you to do that. Can you get away with it? If Vince was there, fuck What the no. fuck was she holding anyway? Why did she look like she was holding the, the, the first Bible? Yeah. Ever. Who? She had some leather-bound book on her the whole entire night with a blanket. Notes? <laughs> How many fucking notes do you need? It looks you... like an Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, maybe, um, maybe they'll sponsor us. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, Rest listen, in peace, Lanny Pop. Uh, I, uh, I'm on the fence. I mean... Sometimes it, I don't like sometimes her. it is a big fight feel, and she makes you really... I mean, you're ready to go. But then sometimes I'm like, oh, man, come on. Like... Like the, the emotional ending, I, I I personally can get behind that, but nah. you got to deliver. You got to do I your job. I like, can't get behind it. Like, dude, I got like like there was a couple moments where I, I felt like you know, all right, yeah, this is awesome. Like, this is why you love wrestling. Like Cole said, mm. but then other times it's like, oh my god, it's got to stop. Yeah, <laughs> it's got to stop. So, uh, all right. So then we got. We obviously talked about Drew and Priest and all that stuff. And then we have Bobby Lashley, Street Profits, Final Testament. That was okay. LA Knight, AJ Styles didn't really do it for me. I don't know. Like, uh, AJ. Oh, that was the next second. That was like the second least. Yeah, AJ Styles came out, new music. Cool. Like, all it was right. was good music. Yeah, definitely good music. All right, fine. 
the the triple threat for the United States Championship was fantastic. I thought it was very very well done. Um, I think <laughs> I think Kevin Owens going to pick up Randy Orton at the start t- with a golf cart was like mint. Yep. But that was very funny. And obviously the main event was the main event. Now before we let Chris get out of here, uh, I gotta ask you your your thoughts on the the first fifty minutes of Monday Night Raw. Like, it was a long long promo. I'm disappointed that they didn't give him a new now, belt. Now do you know that they do you know that they that was a little bit of a homage to the last time there was a new belt. That promo, I don't know if you remember this, but The Rock won the world title and it got rid of the spinner belt. Yeah, and he introduced the the scratch logo. You know who came out? Uh, Cody Rhodes. Yes. Cody Rhodes came out and says, I'm here to, I just want to look at it. Yep. I just want to look. Yeah. So that was their throwback to that. Yep. But the whole like belt swap, you you want to hold you want to hold this one? So I, wanna, I legitimately hold, thought hold that one is like that belt the fuck that, is happening here. That people's champ belt was the one that Pedro Morales held, right? If I'm not mistaken, or similar. It was very similar. People's in, championship belt was never no, held by anybody. Th- no, I know. This the design of it. Like the 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 old the oval. Oh sure, sure, sure. Almost sure, fine. um almost styrofoam yes. world championship belt from back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah. It had a similar vibe to that. I, I I don't know why in my head I'm like he's gonna take the fucking rock Brahma bull off and put like the fucking Cody thing on it and hand it to him or something like that. I I did I felt a face turn coming and it never came. He, he said, just, "Don't you ever let me down again, or don't you ever break, break my, my heart. heart again?" And then he handed him something. And everyone's fucking like, and then WWE, what did he hand him? Like, okay, right, now I got to sit here and wonder well, what it's. it's like here's fucking, what he handed it's him. It's like okay, what it's like the girl you like. Okay, what'd she say? I can't tell you yet. Why? Here here's what here's what was handed. Nothing. <laughs> so there was actually nothing exchanged. I'll 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 we'll go to the grave with that. They're gonna come up with it because at first I was like, "Did he hand him an action figure? Like, what the fuck?" Well, did he, he did do? look like a Colombian drug lord. <laughs> yeah, right. so, we're gonna we're gonna start. Don't, 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 don't tell nobody about this. Nickel. Um, I don't know what it was. I, I, listen, I enjoyed the Triple H promo with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to give it up to Triple H. Obviously, people are saying like, he doesn't want to get the flowers, but he deserves everything. He brought back Stephanie on night two, which I thought was very, very cool. Awesome. Um, as soon as like Irvin said that, like, please welcome Stephanie McMahon. I was like, oh, so this isn't the first WrestleMania without a McMahon because she's right. there. Um, and then even with she Co- did nothing wrong. Not right. And then even with Cody, supposedly she slept a Macho Man. So I mean, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, but then uh, uh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, but then also Cody's. Reference to Bruce Pritchard yep. was another like, hey everybody, you know, like he's actually a catalyst in getting me back into this company and blah blah blah. Well, watch Meanwhile, the co- Ronda Rousey's the out Nightmare there bitching and moaning. Huh? Watch the American Nightmare documentary. He he yeah. uh, said that they were the big reasons why. Yeah, and then you got like people like Ronda Rousey who's like, well, as long as Bruce is there, Vince is there in spirit. Like, shut the fuck up. First of all, like, are we done with this? Dude, whole thing? you were terrible in wrestling, and once you got she, knocked like, out, you never UFC. had anything good come out of a wrestling career, and that's fine. Like, it, sometimes it doesn't translate. That's like CM Punk going to UFC. Didn't work out. Oh well, go back to what you're good at: cutting promos and wrestling. That's why I laugh when people are like, oh, Jack Perry would have if Jack Perry would have been lucky, he would have kicked his ass. Nah, but what he. All right, so obviously I'm going to save AEW stuff for Tommy, but do you have any thoughts on the revealed footage um, that was, you know... What was your intent? What 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 was your game? Because it made you look very much sour grapes. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, and, I, and I'll say this now, and I'll probably double down with, with Tommy. I highly respect all my friends down there. I highly respect Pat Buck. I highly respect Kevin Matthews, who's also in office. All these guys are brilliant at what they do. They're super, super talented. I don't think it had anything to do with them. And and, and that's what I'm saying. Like So now the company is catching backlash because of what they did. Do I think it was the right thing to do? Well, I think, what's their title? What's Nick and Matt's title? I don't know. They're, they're fucking, partial they're, owners, correct? Something like that. Like um, I just I don't know what you were trying to gain from putting that out there because all you Punk did was literally make- went out calmly, respectfully, uh, maturely explained exactly what the video showed. There's no dialogue because there's no cam, there's no mic pickup. Yeah, and you literally had him do exactly what he said, and you got people defending Jungle Boy. Oh, he's fixing his hair when he pushed him. Just because you're fixing your hair doesn't mean you can't be a smart ass or be disrespectful and say something. Can, hey, hey, uh, hey, Payne, uh, go fuck yourself. And I'm doing this. Like, Dave, I like banged your wife. Yeah, Boy, like, I'm going to stand there. Oh, yeah, wait like, till I hands down. Wait, did you? <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> don't answer that. Um, um, no, but, but seriously, like, it just, I, I don't know. Like, he, he looked like he might have said something to him. Punk reacted, choked him, punched him, and then they're calling it a lunge. I step in your direction. It's not Khan. a lunge. He was behind the wall. Oh, so that whole thing there was I don't the think whole... that was a lunge. That was more of him stepping in and telling him, fuck you or whatever. 
And then just, and then he got pulled out. Like you saw Sanjay run in and yep, go over Sanjay, to the side. Yeah, yeah. Malachi Black co- pulled Cody and no, um, Buck said he was there. Punk what? The Buck said he was there. I didn't see him. Well, I didn't look at everybody. <laughs> the, the I was fucking, looking for a red hair. The referee that always has to be on camera was there uh, doing her thing. <laughs> But yeah, it was just a, it's it just, just a it was weird a bad look. It, it's it, a bad it, look. It's it awkward. It made no sense that you literally validated what the guy said. So now it's like, okay, we're not. Well, he's not lying. So now I have to. I'll probably ask Tommy because I didn't watch or see when it actually was aired. I had to go on like Twitter and look at it. But like, well, was, when, when he tweet when he texted us, literally, it, it, just, got, it right, just got dropped. Okay, but I'm I was saying, watching it when he texted. But what in what context? Like, hey, everybody, we're going to show you they now did what's a sit going down on. Like this, the TV was the monitor, and fucking Nick and Matt just said, right now we're going to give you the, the footage of what actually happened. Oh Jesus! Then they cut a promo. Then FTR went out and cut a promo about they're sick and tired of it. It's been eight months, whatever. What did, the fuck and, are we and talking about? Am I not mistaken? For? I didn't see the whole thing. I saw him out there. Did Osprey really call out Triple H? But not. I have no idea. Oh, dude, I didn't watch because Triple H said the same thing. And like some guys just don't want to be here and don't want to do the schedule. And that's 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 not our problem. Not We're not here knock. to cater to anybody. We're just letting you know this is the schedule. This is what the demands it's are. It's also not a knock. Though. And if it's you don't want to be involved, don't be involved. It's like if you here, here's a job. But now uh, Bruv comes out there. Hours. Okay. Yeah, Bruv comes out there. He listen, one of the best wrestlers in the world. But to take shots, why? There's going to be a time, and I'm telling you right now, there's going to be another time in some way, shape, or form where WWE is going to be the only game in town again. At some point, I don't know when it's going to be. It could be. 15, 20 well, years down the line. This weekend was an absolute proof in the pudding that WWE is all the way up there. Yeah. And AEW is right here. Yeah. And then MLW. And then even fucking New Japan's up here. Well, and then TNA everyone else somewhere is in the middle. Somewhere in the middle of AEW, yeah, I, I MLW know, and AEW. And then it's like it just it just proved by leaps and bounds how much better of a product WWE is. And they're not even in the fucking same realm. They're not in the stratosphere. They just aren't. WWE delivers. So. Let's take a quick break from our, uh, get a little word from our sponsors of MadCatBeardCare.com. And when we come back, we got Tommy, who's here to probably, you know, shit all over everything, as he does, as per usual. So, Payne, enjoy work. We'll see you next week. Suck it. We'll be right back. (laughs) You have a beard, huh? I'm not buying it until you buy it. MadCat Beard Care. I like this hat. I also like this beard care. That's why I'm teaming up with Mad Cat Beard Care. It's one of my favorite products and smells. A portion of the proceeds go back to save and rescue cats, which is pretty amazing. Enjoy the products. They are absolutely amazing. This premium beard oil, baby. Oh, yeah. You can only get it from where? MadCatBeardCare.com to buy you some of the most delicious smelling beard products in the world. Delicious. Delicious. Frisco. Delicious. Delicious. Frisco. 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 You heard it. It's delicious. Frisco. 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 For real, I use this stuff every day. It's fantastic. I put it in my hair too, guys. You want a beautiful, perfect beard like the Indie God? Pick up some Indie God beard care right now from Mad Cat. All right, welcome back to the Fight Factory podcast right here on Premier Wrestling, the Premier Wrestling YouTube channel. We are now joined by the voice of the voiceless, Mr. Uh, Tommy D. Tommy? How was uh, how was your experience? Toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use the sock with the hole in it. All right. Well, Payne is still here. He has not exited the building. Let but get back in your cell. <laughs> I'll make you the house. I <laughs> am <laughs> job. Tommy, sir. WrestleMania weekend. First of all, how was your first experience at a WrestleCon? A lot of people, buddy. Yeah, dude. Um, I mean, that's the goal. You it, were there on Saturday. Payne yeah. was there on Friday. It was very hot in that suit. Um, Finally, I, you finally dressed the. Listen, UK. I don't. I don't break the shoot out often, but God damn, did I look good? <laughs> Woo. So, um, so yeah. Listen, did you get a chance to meet any of these stars? And I did interact, um, and I, you know, of course, I went up to the ones that obviously we booked that haven't spoken to me or met me yet. You oh, know. true. Um, so I went up and and spoke to uh, Matt Cardona. You know, he thanked me. A bunch for for booking him. It's like part of me is like, why the fuck are you thanking me? I don't know why he's thanking <laughs> you either, honestly, yeah. to be honest with you. But uh, um, yeah, man, it, it, the, these conventions they're very they're they're fun. Uh, they're good. Uh, time. Victoria came up and said hello. Yes, did that you, was. Did you say like, nice. why do you follow me on Instagram? No, um, <laughs> so. no, I did not. I was just hello. <laughs> yeah, right. um, so yeah, so like I said, Russell, these these conventions they're fun. Great networking events. We already told uh, previously before the break, we were talking about how we booked Mandy Sachs. And, and um, you know, obviously there's people down there that we made contact with that we're still going to be able to um, network with and bring on to the show. So War on the Shore is, is getting bigger and bigger. Um, so, yeah, so that was the convention. But I got to – obviously we, we talked a lot about Mania already uh, previously. But if you had to say, like, 
the one besides Cody, obviously doing his thing and winning the Dude, championship. Night two was yeah. It's it's like, and I wonder if that. I'm not saying that's their intent to do that, well, but like also it was. And I was telling Payne, it was freezing. Yeah, but freezing at, on night one. Look at look at last year. Did night, night one, one do better? Outshine night two, um, by a mile. Now was it? You think the 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 cards itself each card like could like if you look at night one's card do you think that had the remote possibility to top night two night two I'm, had I'm, intercontinental had fu- no it didn't um when the hell it had the, the two, two world had, title matches it had intercontinental it did have intercontinental yeah. yeah so it's like how do you with all those how do you well, even compete I, mean, I think night one would have been a lot better if it wasn't so damn cold and that was right. you know that was when I was there at WrestleCon and I was like. I remember when I got out, I'm like, damn, these guys are going to freeze tonight. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, may, and, and it sucks because we always know that WrestleMania season is, it, it's always in April. If you're going to have it at these outdoor arenas and you want it, I just don't around, think they're going to come back to the East Coast anytime soon. Yeah. Or at least change the day. Like, the, like I believe Minnesota date. is rumored to be the next one, if I'm not mistaken. It's a dome, though. It is a dome. So, like, and, and, but it, it's an 80,000 person dome. Yeah. So it'll be. It'll be fine to do what they want to do, but these outdoor stadiums, yeah, man, East Coast, April, you never know what you're going to get because night day two, it was 65 and sunny all day, and the yeah. sun was shining. I was like, oh, I see it so bad, and I, I think it was it wasn't until the main event where I'm like, this is great. It's not even cold, right? And then the main event was like, I don't know what happened, but it was like a fucking 15 degree <laughs> decrease, and I was like. What, what happened? Like it was, it was nice the whole night. Yeah, but I'm sure you guys warmed up quick because that that main event. It started out slow, which is that's good, right? Yeah, like, build you, you build it up. But the way it ended, it was like, where do you look? You got the Usos flying off the stage, which I mean, they kind of laid an egg in their match the night before, but they made up for it flying off the stage. And then, holy shit, there's John Cena, and then the Gong. When I heard, dude, I, when I heard the Gong, and I was I was watching it on my phone, I marked out like a son of a bitch, <laughs> dude. It was. Because I know a lot of people were expecting maybe the glass to break, right? Yeah. And like, okay, so that's what I was prepared for. When you're not prepared for something, this is a curveball that WWE threw that I was like, this was this was great. This was a great curveball. Nobody they sells like The Rock. Uh, uh, nobody sells like The Rock. Yeah, Payne was saying that there was a little bit of a like he I think he slipped off his belt a little bit and like he could have went higher, but again, great sell. The 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 moment leading in, like when he turns and he looks at him and he's scared out of his mind, like <laughs> Everything just really, really gelled but yeah, with that. I, I marked out, and and I was trying to be as quiet as I could because, you know, Tara and Adriana had just gotten home from 60 miles north of where we were in Philly. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? They had just gotten home, and they were exhausted. So but, you're pulling the old uh, Big Daddy when they score a goal, and you're like, <laughs> oh, dude, it was, <laughs> I had to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we were talking about the main event before, how it all just kind of, Crystallized, superb, and, and fantastic. Yeah, they could have done it any better. Everything. Was I think good. it's kind of crazy. People are like saying that it was better than WrestleMania 17. I think that's a little bit nutty. 17 was. Give me the main. Oh God. Um, was it Austin Rock? Yeah. That no, that was 18. What the fuck is 17 then? Oh my God. I, I. It was in my mind the whole Where way. Where was here. it? Do you know? It, it's in my mind the whole way here. I, my my brain's fucking fried. <laughs> the, this week, the, the start of this week has not been the greatest. Okay. Well. Um, you're here now. You're gonna yeah, it has not been the greatest. You know, so now you're gonna make wise. me. You're gonna um, make me uh, look up WrestleMania 17. But. but like everybody, you know, you can't compare. It's apples and oranges. This was the introduction of the Triple H era. Mm-hmm. Um, they definitely put to bed. It was it was Rock in Austin? I thought they were 18. No, X7 is Rock Austin. It was. Let's see, Rock Austin, Shane McMahon versus Vince with <laughs> Foley as the ref. Um, TLC match was there, so yeah, that was a very good one. And as by well. the way, if anybody has a problem with Paul Heyman's speech, you could suck my fucking dick. Dude, yeah, we were talking about that before too. <laughs> oh man, I couldn't believe I couldn't believe he did that. And again, uh, we were all there. Like you'll you'll never you personally will never get to hear it. Oh no, it's on it, it's on social Unless, media already. Uh, oh well, people will probably be recording with it the, then with the. Uh, Bleep the bleeped out version of it. Okay, good. Because like when that happened, I looked at Payne. I'm like, did did that just make air? No, like, I was uh, listening to that on the way to WrestleCon. I was laughing my ass off because I knew exactly good. what he said. It was very good. Very and well. Bully Ray, of course, 
he jumps up because who's got the most famous promo talking about that is Bully Ray. Dude, Randy Orton almost fell off his chair. Saw that. And everybody, all the stars, like if you're Triple H, they're just like, <laughs> dude, you got to let that fucking fly. Like, I, I don't know how you come back from that. You just don't. Uh, and that's the best part about it. But I was telling Payne, they got to either put it on one night or uh, its own separate night or it should be its own separate night. Start it earlier or something because that. And again, it was their creative decision to go with Heyman first, knowing he was going to go as long as he possibly wanted to. But then that really does dig a hole for the next four or five people, whatever it was. Yeah, this was also a, a, a tough class just because I felt that way, too. These these, you know. Newer generations have no idea really who Bull Nakano is. Mm -hmm. um, they really don't have any idea who Thunder Thunderbolt, no. Thunderbolt Patterson is. Uh, you know, for for us, even he was was out of our era. But you know the name because of what he's done right. for black for black wrestlers. Yeah. You know, from Jump, um, his speech was phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I went back. I went back and watched that one again. I have not went back and watched the Paul Heyman one because I was like, I'm never going to get that version again. And <laughs> I just felt like that that's the one I want in my brain no, for the listen, rest of my when life. When you watch that, they couldn't get their bleeps in order. No, I heard they were messing he, he up couldn't and get shit. Their yeah. The only one that they got in order was that one. They, it was almost <laughs> like they knew that was coming. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, imagine being that guy with that job. You're like, I'm a hum -a, hum -a, hum -a. oh, shit. You know, yeah. like, you got to hit the button. Like, that was a lot. Um, but yeah, so yeah. the Hall of Fame was great. So anything besides the Jay and Jimmy, which is actually Chris was in lockstep saying that one fell a little flat. Did anything you know else kind of they they can't wrestle each other because they have literally the same exact style. It is right. It's because I mean, even when like Brett and Owen, you knew Owen was more of a I don't even want to call him a high flyer, but just a little bit more on the quicker side. He was more he was more of the dynamite kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. You I know what see I mean. That. And Brett yeah. was was more technical. Yeah. So, um, besides Rhea is just a Rhea, yeah. star. There, there's no Be, uh, fuck, fucking Jay Cargill. Like I was telling Payne, man, the hot tag <sighs> is when you get a tag and you come in like a house of fire and start blowing people up. She comes in so methodical, slowly, and just goes in and basically says, "Come on, let, let's go." You here, know, and, here and that is was my that. issue. And you have an issue, now. and I, you got to be the only person on the fucking planet with an issue with not Jade with, right now. Not with Mania. Oh. Now I understand the next night. Yes, okay, they had a. You know, find something for for Chelsea to do, and Chelsea I, Green. I, I, everybody who's who's bashing Samantha Irvin, you're you're scum to me. Um, <laughs> Yo, right before the pain, that's all he said. Scum to so me. So pain is scum to Tommy. That'll, you that'll go scum. over well. Um, but the squash bet, they they can't start having Jade Cargill doing squash matches because then you're going to wind up like, like she's AEW. doing the three moves to do them again. They're they're literally building or booking her. Like AEW did, it's just at a grander scale. Yeah, that's well, that's well, my well, issue. But I, I guarantee you, that. I guarantee you, they'll pull. No, nah, I want to say pull the plug on squashes, but they'll under they'll know when she's ready to go. Now though. she is a SmackDown star. Like she is a SmackDown draft coming up. <sighs> well, I mean, I don't think Nick Houseman has a show anymore for us to do a draft show again. Fuck so. Nick Houseman. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> Goober. But <laughs> he's another fucking dork. But but yeah, it was uh, look, man. It, this was I hadn't I've been very excited for this WrestleMania. Uh, it five stars. Yeah, dude. Top to bottom. Top to bottom. So I did save um I don't have to talk about all of AEW, but obviously the big thing that's well, been hey, listen, and here's what I'm gonna tell you. There were good matches on last night. There really were. And it bothers me, and I'm not gonna mention names because we're friends with them. When you've got to go on Twitter and say I know there's a lot going on right now that everybody's talking about, but there's really good match right there. Your your company shit the bed because nothing else that was done that night right. mattered. Just sure. like leaving Wembley. Sure. The, Just like the, leaving Wembley. Can you remember any matches that actually went down? No, because, I mean, obviously you do, but, like, yeah. can you, like, what was the focal point? The scrum in the back. Just like All Out. Or well, that was all out when the the big oh. one happened with the chairs flying, and or was that or was that it's like uh, full gear? And I just don't understand. Uh, again, like, where what's the motive? What is the what is the actual motive for Tony Khan to just do this? Like, and it's this is, not gonna make you look any stronger. <laughs> In fact, it proved everything that fucking Punk said was right, and it was accurate. Right, but here's so how, what did that do? So here's how it's being spun by the fans. 
oh, so we're, we're just saying it's okay to go in and, and hit somebody at work. No, that's the reason why he was fired. But your stance that you were taking when Tony was saying he was releasing the footage was, Punk's going to come out a liar. But no, he didn't lie about anything. And, 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 and oh, oh, so very convenient that the, the fucking thing was muted. Well, because I think if, if the volume was on, it would have made it look worse because it would have shown him saying, if you're going to do something about it, do it. Listen, you could talk, and, and I was the, the mo- and he'll even tell you, the most vocal about CM Punk in the UFC. I said it was a mistake from jump. Mm. When, you know, we had our original MMA podcast, I went on a fucking diatribe about it for an hour, how I think it was complete bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because I knew it was going to flounder. Okay, okay. He be, he came in third in a jujitsu tournament out of three jiu-jitsu. people. So he's not a mixed martial artist. All right. Jack Perry is a hundred and fucking thirty pounds. I'm very certain Phil Brooks could slap him into a coma. So, and that's another thing. Like, let's not let Jungle Boy off the hook here. You no. know what I mean? Like. He's obviously in, where is he, Japan now Listen, or some shit? Because his strings are being pulled by the Tickle Taint twins. And I don't really understand. And that's another thing. Bro, this is. Punk is 3-0 and in fights in AEW. Like, right history now. is absolutely repeating itself with, like, d- did they not understand how WCW went out of business? Oh, I They love went how- out of business because of the fact that there was too much creative power to the to the wrestlers. These guys are CEOs, whatever the fuck they're calling themselves. EVPs. Uh, what are they, e- EVPs. It, it, it's not going to work, guys. You can't. And if you want to make that a storyline, make it a storyline. But then you really can't do it in real life because then people are going to start to fucking hate you. And it sucks because, again, my opinion and nobody else, well, some of people share my opinion. I think the Young Bucks are fantastic. Do I think they're cornballs now? Yeah, I do. Is that what they're supposed to be? Probably. But, like, I just, I don't know, man. It's I think there was so a time weird. when they were fantastic. Yeah, man, it's but just, they're, rough. They're, you know, they they built their heads up, and you know, Cody. You know, everybody gives the credit to Tony Khan. Cody started fucking AEW. He did. It was his idea. Tony Khan put the money behind it all. Yeah, and that's what. And, and you know what? Not for nothing, but that's what successful businesses need. Right. If somebody could be the idea guy. Right? Like, I'm an idea guy with this whole studio. It would be wonderful if somebody came in and said, here's $5 million, let's get to yeah, work. Yeah, sure. everybody has, you know, it's, what is that, uh, <laughs> champagne dreams and beer bottle pockets. <laughs> right. So it's like, I, I, I understand everything that these guys have tried to do, but they're going down this really, really bad, bad path of chaos. Well, and, and, and they're here's... thriving on chaos. And now, you know it's bad when, like, these these news sites they got to come out the next day and say like oh no 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 this guy he talked to a a really uh, high up wrestler on the roster he says everything's fine backstage it's not man you you can no. lie and there was a report today that it's said not. That, there was a report today that said that there were people in the back that were not happy that the footage was released and you know what I bet that there is I bet that there you is should, all right listen I'm gonna say this right now point blank period stop if you are happy that Tony Khan went out and did this. You're you're wrong. You're wrong because it's just this is the kind of shit. There's no right. It's petty and it's garbage. There, and I, I don't understand. Look, AEW ain't gonna come knocking on my door anytime soon, right? And I understand that, and I made peace with that. That's fine. I even talked to Kevin last night. Matter of fact, and I was like, hey, whoever that guy is, I didn't know his name it was, you know, it was my fault. But the one who uh, interviewed Mercedes, uh, I forget his name, Alvarez or something like that. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can crush that role. No, I, I can absolutely crush that role. Like that, that would be a good role for me. I was a little. Hi. So, like, whatever. You know, maybe I shouldn't have texted him at all. But anyway, what I'm saying is AEW ain't going to come knocking on my door anytime soon, nor am I going to shit all over the product. However, as a business owner, a very, 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 very small business owner, the one thing I would never do is just shit where I eat and just cause chaos amongst my peers, against amongst the people that come in and out of this door. Like, I just, I don't, I it's not good business practice. I just don't you see know, it. And, and, and it's difficult, right? Because it's like... It does have fuck you money, which yeah, means... And that's, and that's just the whole thing. So everybody's like, oh, everybody thinks you're going out of business. No, because he's got fuck you money. Right. But here's the thing. You're not generating shit. The whole Mercedes thing, it's falling flat. To be honest with you, I forgot she was even there. That promo was hot She's garbage a last night. promo. Hot garbage. I didn't understand the point of it. Ooh, somebody attacked her. What? Like, what? 
Like, again, I'm not going to... That's a creative decision that they want to go with. Yeah, but last night... But again, you just said it. That shit's falling flat, last man. That's not good. They sank their entire show with two segments. One, the all-in footage. Because... And here's the best part. If they did pop a good rating, people only did it to the, for the CM Punk stuff. So not only did you put CM Punk over on your... CM Punk on, was trending last night during Dynamite. Over. Oh, yeah. Not only did you put him over on your own show, you put him over more on the fucking competition show. You literally helped them out. Tony Schiavone was sitting there with his hand like this. Well, that's kind of how he was at the fucking WrestleCon, too, the entire weekend. <laughs> Didn't seem like you wanted to be there. Would you? Because, like, he was named in that whole thing from Punk during the, the Helwani interview. He was the one that went to Punk in catering and said, hey, we need your help with this because Jack Perry's freaking out because he wanted to do a fucking glass spot with a, with a fucking rental car. Why? Why? What would it have done? You busted the window of a rental car. Ooh, we've never seen that before. It was more impressive when Big Show bitch slapped the fucking windshield <laughs> of the Jeep and yeah. then flipped it the fuck over. You know why? Because WWE probably owned the goddamn Jeep. And then the second segment where they shot themselves in the foot, Will Ospreay. Yeah, what was that? Responding to Triple H. What did Triple H say that wasn't true? You literally took the job at AEW because they were, A, offering you more money, and B, letting you stay in England and fly to work once or twice a week. There's a, there, and I'm not going to even say the company's name. They're out of fucking business because they were paying this guy to come to them. Warrior. I didn't want to say <laughs> it. Warrior. They... They're, you got to make smart business decisions, and again, and look, at our, like, like, look at us we, now. We've been a promoter. We've been promoters for a cup of coffee, right? So I don't know the ins and the outs and the intricacies, but I will say there's certain things we just can't do because we know we can't afford it. It will sink us. Yeah, you know, it's like so. You want to keep throwing money at these guys, and I said this to Payne. Will Osprey is one of the top talents in the Absolutely. world, right? But again, to take a shot at the guy that you know damn well that somewhere along the line. AEW may not make it. I don't know when. It could be 10, 15, 20 years, something. It may you may be looking for a place to end your career, and it sure as shit ain't gonna be with Triple H because he's not like he knew he knew exactly what he was saying when he said it. He said, Hey, this is the schedule. And if you want to work scrap, you don't want to work the schedule, fine. That's fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. Everything's gonna go. Just as much as it went before that, everything's gonna go just fine. Will Ospreay to take shots, even Renee. She looked like she was defeated in that promo, too. Like, you know, because stop. she's probably sitting there. She's probably saying, we just made ourselves look terrible tonight. You and, it was, you it was a, and it was a thing that I put on Twitter. Uh, I forget who it was that put a picture up of uh, Renee standing there with the mic with her head down. I was like, caption this. I said, doesn't matter how good our matches are tonight because two, se two segments just sank us. And that's unfortunate because, again... I know a lot of hardworking guys down there, man, who are busting their ass day in and day out and are trying to make something of themselves and make a career out of this, and they are unable to get over because you guys are selfish and you guys are just bored and just little carny kids that want to just keep digging at the fucking mecca of the sport. Like, you're, you're doing this to yourselves. You're shooting yourselves in the foot. I don't understand the mindset. And anybody back there who's rooting on Tony Khan to do this kind of shit is just happy about the paycheck that they're getting every two well, weeks. And that's, really, that's it. That's what it is. 100%. <clears throat> you're, you become, uh, CM Punk said it in his first pipe bomb ever. You, you surround yourself with douchebag yes men. That's what these people are. The people that are rooting on Mr. Khan to do this kind of shit are just as bad as Tony Khan. The, the EVPs are the Vince McMahon stooges. Yes, Mr. McMahon. Yeah, dude, it's fucking P Briscoe and Patterson. Yeah. Just younger. One, one, <laughs> one million percent. And, yeah, and it's just, I, they can't look at that. Like, Tony Khan can't look at himself in the mirror and say, this is a good idea. No, no, he can, because here's the thing. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Here's the thing. And, and this is, you know, uh, like what we're running into. You're letting people that you think know more than you do because you don't come from the wrestling world. Like, you and Payne, you guys come from the West, the wrestling world. I'm an outsider coming in. I'm thinking certain people know a little bit more than I do. I'm not thinking in the back of my head, well, they're trying to put themselves or maybe their friend over. Like, he's not thinking that. He's thinking they know more than I do, so I'm going to throw this idea out to them. They don't give a shit if he does it. It doesn't affect them. Yeah. 
And I'm sure that there are people back there that are afraid to tell him, I think this is a bad idea because, A, he's not going to listen, and, B, if he tells— Listen, from— yeah. And, B, if he tells them, like they're, the, the EVPs, well, this guy doesn't think it's a good idea, well, now they're going to get fucked with. Right. And, and that's and that's the part where it becomes all friends league. You know what I mean? Like Where it's like if you're not in that inner circle, you have, they have actual the, you're talent. out. You, they have actual talent over there. That should be getting over, like Murderhawk. He should be getting over. Brian Cage, he looks the part. He looks the part. But when you put him on a dynamite, he's on his back. This is where wins and losses matter because they go by ranking systems, correct? In that regard, yeah. William Morrissey. He was like, oh, and forever. Then they put him in a tag team with Ricky Starks, and somehow they're, they're the champions, and nobody really cared. They're still the champs? I don't think they are anymore. And that's the, that's the part that I'm under. Like, I don't know. Here's the best part. Ricky Stark spent WrestleMania weekend with fucking Cody Rhodes. As he should. Yeah. And so Dustin. And then Dustin, I thought for sure. I think I said that in the group. Oh, that would have been hysterical. I said, are they going to put the fucking belt on Dustin the same week that Cody got it? Like, that would be hilarious in that regard. Like, but I don't root for them to fail. But you can't, you can't overlook shit. Nobody was harder on the WWE product than WWE fans for all these years. Yeah. People still watched it because, yeah, okay, it was ingrained in them, right? Mm -hmm. You have this product in the very beginning. It started out like, okay, this is something different. And, yeah, COVID hurt a lot. COVID hurt a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I think it ruined some of their their debuts. Like, it definitely ruined the Sting debut because he he debuted with, with no crowd. Is that right? Yeah. Sting debuted during the COVID era. There was with no the, crowd. With the Trons on, at least? All the TVs with the crowd? They didn't have TVs with the crowd in uh, AEW. The, the Thunderdome was... Uh, oh, WWE. the debut over at uh, AEW. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay. the, the Hardys. Yeah. Their debut was terrible. Matt Hardy's talked about that on the Chris Van Vliet show, about how that kind of fell flat because of the fact that there was nothing. You know, and they were... Uh, honestly, things really started to slip during that, that exploding ring garbage match. It, it just... They started to lose their way, and they were never able to rebound from it because it's obvious that he wasn't listening to the people in the back that actually know what they're doing. You have Arn Anderson back there, Jerry Lynn back there, you, Pat Buck, Kevin. These guys, they know what they're doing. I don't know if they're just not listening to them. or I don't think they have a voice is what I'm saying. So, I don't think they have a voice, and that sucks because their voices were very powerful anywhere else. Pat Buck left WWE to go to AEW. He, Think about that. He produced uh, Charlotte's match at WrestleMania, like which he just came and back. Brock and Roman. Yeah. So it's like you, you're coming from the big time. You've been there. You know what the and look, the schedule is demanding. And when you're raising a family, maybe you do want to make the decision to right. kind of lighten it up. And I completely understand yeah. with that. But it, like you, of all people, he should be the one that's like down there, like, all right, guys, this is how this is a success. This is how we should do it here. At least little little marinate, like little little drops here in, in the sauce. Like a little bit of, uh, let's sprinkle some WWE here, WWE here, WWE here. Because that will help us. Nobody wants to hear that shit. They just want to do crazy un, like crazy matches that, that there's no story whatsoever. Or they want to show fucking backstage like when they first started It doesn't collision. make any sense When they me. first started Collision, that was my favorite show. It was. And you know what the problem with that was? The fucking EVP saw that it was the better show. And then, oh, now Jack Perry's on Collision. Let's sprinkle it in. Let's get rid of punk. And now it's just a Saturday show that nobody really watches. I can't imagine their ratings. I haven't looked, but I, I, I can't imagine they're any good. For Saturdays? Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. I think this WrestleMania Saturday, they didn't even crack 300,000 people. 300,000 fucking viewers. That would be a lot, in my mind, to do that. During Mania? Like, again, read the room. Move your shit to fucking Friday. Compete against SmackDown. You would have did fine. And or wait, no, whole... I'm sorry. They still have they still have Rampage on Fridays? Yeah. <laughs> and this whole thing, oh, AEW gets 4 million viewers. The, the little tiny writing is the first minute of the show. Yeah, well, that makes sense. That's usually when I tune in. Yeah. See what's first. See what the card is. Well, then... it's also the overlap of the shows that are before. <laughs> like, like you just forget to change it? Like, let's put it this way. Uh, my buddy Ricky and Mike. Ricky's the, the father of the, the trainer. Okay. They were at this bar in Point Pleasant Saturday night. They go every every Saturday night because it's right up the street from Mike's house. Mm -hmm. 
They shut off the Yankee game for WrestleMania. They didn't advertise it. Like, you know, it's not like the UFC where it's like, you know, it's advertised. They didn't advertise it. Nothing. They turned off the Yankee game on all of their TVs inside that bar to put on WrestleMania. I mean, if that doesn't scream that this place knows what they're doing. Do you do you think that they would do that for all in or no? no. And again, you you want to you want to kind of look at it like give them time. They'll be all right. You know, it's been but four years. It's been four years, and, and you guys can't seem to just get out of your own way. And that's what really stinks because I really do appreciate a lot of the people down there. And I think there's so many, so many talented Absolutely. individuals down there. And it's like they're lost in the shuffle. Someone will be like, hey, did you see this match? I'm like, no. You know, like, and it stinks because if, it, just like you said, if there was a banger of a match last night, which Shay, producer Shay, did put out the matches. And, you know, uh, Shane Anna Taylor. Jay's actually learning how to wrestle. Shane she, Taylor she Promotions good. defeat Chris Jericho Hook. That match didn't really was any good anyway. I watched that one. But Mariah May, Anna Jay, Samoa Joe and Dustin Rhodes, they actually killed it. Yeah. They actually killed it. That was an amazing match. I watched that from start to finish. Um, even Adam Copeland in the beginning against Penta. These matches are good, and they're delivered by fucking legends of this game. But it gets overshadowed by bullshit. And you got to admit, and you got to wonder, what 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 is going through the mind of a guy like Adam Copeland right now? Like fuck. probably nothing, because you know what he's he's getting to do what I, he wants to do, and I'm sure that he wants and to. And I'm sure it. he's fucking getting well compensated, which is the the main. And he thing. knows that his his legend status will never be there. They still talk about Edge and WWE when they bring up WrestleMania. And WWE and, is no stranger to bringing up anybody that's down there at AEW. They don't give a shit. They fucking had the Bucks on. Uh, the, the Cody video. Right. They didn't care. As they shouldn't. They're not competition, so fuck it. Who cares? It's it, it's really not. And it shouldn't want to be. Like, the reason why WCW was competition was because they were beating WWE. 83 Handily. weeks. <laughs> 83 weeks, yeah. Um, and you can, you can sit there and say it's a four-year, four-year-old company. All the hell you want. They have the same outlets. They're on syndicated television. Mm -hmm. They have names. They just don't have the right direction. And CM Punk wasn't wrong. He said, Tony Khan is a very nice guy who doesn't know how to be a boss. He's not wrong. No. And that's kind of the, the vibe I get. I never met the guy, but I'm like, or I cross paths with him for about an eighth of a second. But like, that's the vibe like, I get. Like I, I, a I very get a, nice person. I get a massive wrestling fan. Huge mark. Yeah. Huge, huge mark. Money bags McGee, right? Got all the money in the world. His dad and the, whatever they got going on with the Jaguars and across the pond. Like, all the money, just he doesn't know how to say no to these people who are in his brain and in his mind right now. That's the problem. And that's a problem. So, again, I don't want to harp on it forever. Uh, you WrestleMania. Can't, you, can't, you can't let the wrestlers run your promotion. It's the um, inmates running the asylum. We've, we've all seen this, and we've seen yeah. the end result. We've seen the end result. We've watched it crumble, WCW. You're on that same path a lot quicker than WCW was. So and it's, it's a shame because I... I watched both, yeah, WCW so I. Well, I mean, and WWE. I, 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 I was mo I was majorly into WWE, WCW. I believe WCW started at eight when Raw started at nine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for that first hour, I was locked in to see what was going on with WCW. Not as much as WWE, but like I look around and I'm like, there's no way. There's there's no way I would flip a channel right now with, with if WWE and AEW are stacked against each other on a Monday or a Friday or whatever. I'm not changing the channel. I, for what? Like, you know, we, had, like, we had three TVs going on in my house at the time. One TV had the Monday Night Football game on. One TV had Raw. And then either my TV or my, cousin, my cousin's TV had Nitro on. So we were, like, switching yeah. up and down, up and down. But in any event, WrestleMania comes and goes. A new season, new regime. Triple H seems to be on the ball right now. So did you hear about the new signings for WWE? Besides Jacob Fatu? Besides Jacob Fatu? And Julia? Julia who? Julia from Stardom. Okay. Oh, yeah, I saw her in NXT. But the Jacob Fatu one, that's that's big, man. And We've been waiting for it. You know what I mean? Like, fightful. You got to give Sean Ross Sapp. Nah, I don't have to give him. No, no, no. Because I'll he, give Katie her. I met her. She's great. Because She's he, nice. <laughs> no? Nobody likes her? <laughs> he, well, everybody, no, he flipped out. He flipped everybody out. Everybody seems to not like her. And I was like, oh, she was a sweetheart to me. He flipped out on one of these... You know, dirt sheets that posted the Jacob Fatu thing, and in very and in white lettering, put, 
you know, uh, fightful, and he flipped out. So, Sean Ross Sapp, yes, you guys brought it first, that Jacob Fatsu signed. Then Rikishi on Instagram had put, like, a cryptic tweet or a Instagram or tweet, whatever the fuck it is. Um, and Jacob Fatu was in the center of the picture with the, the whole rest of the, the bloodline. Oh, uh, you talk about like a picture uh, of like a group? Yeah. When they were like in the in the hotel room. So, all right, I got to ask you, and just because I don't know, maybe you might know off the top of your head. Jacob Fatu, what's the relation? Tonga Kid, son. Sam Fatu. Sammy's that is, son? What? what how, no. how is he connected? He's Rikishi's nephew. So Rikishi okay. and Sam Fatu are brothers. So he's Sam, Sammy's his father. Sam Fatu is Jacob Fatu's father. Oh, shit. I, yeah. I met Sammy out in fucking WXWC4. Yeah, the, the, the Tonga Kid. Yeah, dude. He was awesome. also in the Body Slam movie with Roddy Piper, one of the most underrated wrestling movies in history. That's how Jacob Fatu and I actually bonded. When I met him the first time, when he was turning face, that's how MLW does it. They're heels. They don't come out. They don't do press. Um, I saw him out in the lobby doing press. I'm like, they're turning him tonight. This was the He was out there doing the press chamber. prior to the Before. turn? That's what I'm saying, prior. Yeah. Yep. That was weird. Uh, but, yeah, Jacob, listen, how it's all going to play out, but I think I, it would be an awesome thing if, if the bloodline continued under a new leadership, whether it be, you know, look, Roman already posted. He's not silent. Roman's working out saying day one. Did you see the one, video w- that, that WWE posted today? No. Uh, While the Cody celebration was going on, him – him and Hay- Heyman hugging. Yeah, I saw that video a couple days that ago. That was awesome. It was great, man, because he's basically, thank you so much. Like, if it wasn't for Paul Heyman and that whole run, we don't know what Roman is at this point. But Roman's a superstar. He's on the Mount Rushmore. He is, uh, to some, uh, including John Cena, the GOAT, right? And we already had this conversation. But I will say, I don't foresee him being gone for very long. I, I Like, he might be on a vacation for maybe a couple weeks or something like that, but the tribal chief is coming back, and I think he's going to bring a whole new regime as far Even as Sean Waltman tweeted about Fatu. That's good. These are these are big things like for him. And, and listen, you know Jacob Fatu has come a long way, man. Yeah, but who's who's going to know better than Waltman? Like you know, Triple H is one of his best friends. Like it's true, he put he goes the WWE universe is about to you know their world is about to be set on fire by Jacob Fatu. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I don't know if they're going to bring him in through NXT. Um, I. Stand firmly. Him and Solo would probably be the best tag team. It would be like the like the Head Shrinkers. And then you think about uh, was his name Siki? This, uh, what's the who's uh, Umaga's kid? The one oh, that's at GCW. Um, Zilla, Zilla, Ziki. <laughs> I don't know why I got that. Down the pipeline, you know, like these guys are all going to be there. And you know what? There is only one place to be. You're not going to see one of the. The, the bloodline members pop up at AEW anytime soon. It's just not going to happen. Like, these are why. Well, people thought that when Tony took a picture with Zilla one time back it, backstage at AEW. No. You want to get your reps? Get your reps. He's going to want to He seems to be getting his reps well. And listen, GCW, you know, working with WWE. Those guys are fire. Working with fi- WWE. They're, bro, they're, they're fucking in every town in this whole country. Yeah. It's crazy. I run their social media on Premier Wrestling. Dude, every day I got to fucking copy and paste where they're going next. They're everywhere. It's insane. So shout out to Brett Lauderdale and, and everybody there. And look what they did with Bloodsport. You know, you had... You had Even friggin- Frost was out there doing her thing on Bloodsport. It's awesome. And then Savage Gentleman kicked the shit out of somebody, too. Akira. It's like, it's like- which, was, which was hysterical because Akira's table was not far from ours. So, of course, he, he walked right by Victor Benjamin at the table after him and I had our little spat. Mm, your spat. Anyway, that <laughs> is how WrestleMania weekend plays out. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Like I said, for every great thing you hear in pro wrestling related to the WWE, there is always that kind of like that that cloud that kind of looms at some point. You know, they want to rain on the parade, and and that's fine. I just can't wait for you to see Julia. Yeah, no, I'm excited oh. to see. I'm excited to see her. I don't. I don't. I really hope they don't change her style. You know, what I'm really excited to see. I'm really excited to see. Larry Dallas on commentary for AAA because he signed a 15-year contract. I don't know if anybody knows that what because douche. nobody even knows who the fuck Larry Dallas is. And uh, this is my quick little fuck off, dude. Nobody cares about you. You're irrelevant. Like, you what paid the fuck to play. Was that? What fuck the fuck you. was that? At no point did Bro, you Bro, he say follows that- me. We've worked together. Yeah, but at no point did you say 72,000 people were there. 
to see you and God. I said I'm in front of a sea of 72,000 people. Was I not? Did I, was I wrong? No. No. But you took it upon yourself to just go into business for yourself. Try And guess what? That was your most interacted tweet that you've sent in like a year. Because I engaged. Josh engaged. We were pissed. I was pissed. I was very upset. But it's like, you're just a joke, Dude, once bro. I, once I you're saw a joke. that, when I saw that, I got, fe- I, first of all, I was fucking exhausted because that was a long day. Yeah. And then I got to see that bullshit. Like, what's your fucking problem, dude? He's, listen, it, 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 again, if he's playing the heel, mission accomplished. You, you know, you're, you're, you know, you got well, over. Well, not really mission accomplished because besides us, nobody gave a fuck. But, but, you know, and I feel bad for Conan, bro. You got to deal with that guy, like, and pretend that he's good. Why? Because his rate is cheap. <laughs> like, you know, like, why? Because he, because he knows the lucha, bro. First of all, the the Dragon Gate bullshit. Like, I know your whole story, pal. Right? They did an entire podcast on two and a half wrestlers. I can't even say the name of the title of the podcast because it's not appropriate in today's day and age. But let's just say it rhymes with schmetard, right? Because that's exactly what you were. You paid to play to go over to Dragon Gate and pretend to call yourself some kind of talent. I met you in 2014 with Dave LaGreca. You were nothing but nice to me then. But I tell you right now, and I'm, I'm, I'm a 38-year-old man, married, kids at home. I'm all set. I'm good. Life is great. We got the Fight Factory Wrestling coming up. We're all good. I'm fine. But if I ever see you in public, I'm going to slap the taste right out your fucking mouth. And you're going to know exactly why I did it. And that's how we're going to end the show. <laughs> so, for Dave Sturgio, boink, that is Tommy D. That was Chris Payne. Thank you to our sponsors that have come on board, obviously, for this show. And, of course, Santiago Sports, uh, the orthopedic. Uh, I'm drawing a blank with the name because I'm just on a roll right now. Obviously, everybody, Premier Wrestling, everybody involved. We got some big announcements coming down the pike. We're very excited about it. Dave Sturgio, Tommy D. We'll see you guys next time.